Hi, my name is Essence. I'm a chemist at the Glazer Children's Museum, and today I'm going to teach you the chemistry behind hand washing. I'm also going to teach you some helpful tips on keeping your hands clean, and we're going to do a fun, science-filled art project that you and your grown-up can do at home. So we've got a lot to learn today. Let's get started with it. So we know that hand washing with soap and water is the best way to keep our hands clean from harmful germs like dirt, bacteria, and viruses. But why is that? Well, it's all done because of the chemistry of three very important things, and that's soap, water, and oil. So you may not notice it, but your hand is covered in a thin layer of oil. And this oil is generally really good for our hands. It keeps our hands moisturized and our skin healthy so that it doesn't dry out. Now I've represented the oil and fats that our hands naturally produce with yellow Legos. And if you have a set of Legos at home, you can follow along with this demonstration. Now, as you interact with things in the world, um, things like germs, bacteria, all those kinds of things, they will naturally stick to that oil that's on the surface of your hands. And we'll represent these germs and bacteria and dirt with little small gray and black Legos. So, how do we get the germs that are stuck to the oils on our skin off? Well, we can try to use water, um, but that unfortunately would not work very well. And here's why. Fats, like the oils that our hands naturally produce, also represented here with these large yellow Legos, they are what's called nonpolar compounds. Can you guys say that? Nonpolar compounds. Nonpolar things feel kind of slippery and slimy to the touch. And nonpolar things also, also attract to other nonpolar things. And they can mix together really well. So if you took something that was nonpolar and mixed it with something else that was nonpolar, they'd mix together really well. Now, if we wanted to wash our hands with just water, the germs wouldn't come off because water, unfortunately, doesn't mix very well with oil. Now, let's take a look at what happens when I add some water to a cup of oil. They don't mix. Well, that's because water is polar and polar things only mix with other polar things. We'll represent polar things like water with red Legos. Unfortunately, water slides right past the oil on our hands, leaving behind all of the germs that are attached to that oil. That's gross, right? So what we need is a compound called a micelle. A micelle is something that is nonpolar on one side and polar on the other side. And guess what? Soap is a micelle. Soap has a nonpolar side, which mixes with other nonpolar things like oils. Um, and the polar end attaches to other polar things like water. So when you wash your hands with soap, the nonpolar sides of the soap surround the nonpolar oil on your hands, thus surrounding all of the germs attached to that oil. Then when you wash away the soap with water, the polar sides of the soap attaches to the polar water, and that takes away the oil and the germs with it and goes straight down the drain. That's pretty awesome, and it's pretty clean. When the soap and water interact with your hands and move around to mix with the compounds that it loves to mix with, this movement of polar and nonpolar compounds moving together can be represented in a really cool art project that you can do at home. So let's try that out so you can see how it works. The ingredients that you'll need for this project are really simple. You'll need milk, a shallow bowl or a plate, um, some liquid food coloring, and a Q-tip, although the Q-tip is optional. You can find a detailed list of these instructions at glazermuseum.org forward slash GCM at home. What you're gonna do is take your bowl or your plate and fill it with some milk. Then you're gonna add three to six drops of food coloring. 
and you can use as many different colors as you would like. Get creative with it. We're making some art. Milk is a micelle, just like soap. So it has polar and non-polar sides to it. This is because milk is made up of water, which is polar, and fats, which are non-polar. So in order for this experiment to work, you'll need to make sure that you're using milk that has fat in it. So you should use whole milk, which works best, or at the very least, 2% milk. The food coloring that's in the milk is water-based. So it is polar and attaches to the water that's inside of the milk. First, what you'll do is you'll dip either your finger or your Q-tip into a pool of soap that you have, and then you're going to place it on the surface of the milk. You don't need to twirl it around because the colors will move on their own. Now watch as the molecules arrange themselves to be near the sides that they love to mix with. This is what happens when we wash our hands, but we just can't see it. We can see it here because of the food coloring, and it's really, really cool. You can use this to make a cool art project at home. Once the experiment stops to work, you can pour out the old milk and pour in some new milk and start again. So now you have a cool art project that you can do at home and you know the chemistry behind hand washing. But we need to make sure that you know the correct mechanics to wash your hands. We don't, if we don't do a good job of covering our whole hands with soap, and washing away all of that soap, we could leave oil and germs behind on our hands. So here are some tips for making sure that every part of your hand gets covered with soap. We will use some bright pink acrylic paint to represent the soap and demonstrate if we've covered our entire hands with the soap. Rub the soap between the palm of your hands, but you'll notice we only have soap on one side, so interlace your fingers together to get the soap between all of your fingers. Then use your palms to lather the back of your hands with the soap while keeping your fingers interlocked. Don't miss your fingertips. Wash them by interlocking your fingers and closing your hands together like so. Next, wash both thumbs. Then. Finish up the job by washing both of your wrists. You'll notice that my entire glove is covered with pink paint. Using this technique, we can make sure that our whole hand is covered with soap. Now, after you've learned where to wash your hands and how to do it, now you're, you need to make sure that you're doing it for the appropriate amount of time. The CDC recommends that you should wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. So that's 20 seconds or more. A good timer is to sing happy birthday twice, then start to wash the soap off of your hands. You can watch me put all these steps into place here in this video. Happy, happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to me. Thanks so much for tuning in and learning about the chemistry of hand washing with me. I had a lot of fun and I hope you did too. We'll see you at GCM at home next time. Have an awesome day.